Hello everyone, this is Ted Bauman here, editor of The Bauman Letter with your Friday Bauman Daily video. Uh, before I uh, address today's topic, I just want to acknowledge that I did have some technical problems with the last couple of videos, uh, which made my voice probably sound a little strange. Um, and I just want to assure those of you who noticed this that I do indeed have my red stapler. Uh, they did not take it away from me. Today I want to talk about uh, the technical foundations for my uh, take on the market. Now remember, my fundamental thesis is that um, the Fed can do all the money printing it likes, but it cannot print a functioning economy, and that fundamentally the big picture here is about the increasing divergence between price and earnings in the stock market. And eventually, prices are going to so overshoot earnings that uh, people will realize that this is essentially a, an asset bubble that these prices are not justified. And at that point, um, the typical movement of the stock market into herd mentality will mean that we will see a rapid decline in prices across the board. However, I think um, that pessimistic approach um, can be explained more adequately by looking at some technical indicators in the stock market itself, in stock market prices and the various indicators we use to analyze them. So that's what I'd like to do today. And uh, I'm going to be showing a lot of charts, uh, so uh, hang in there. Now let's start with a chart that compares the rally after the big Christmas drop in 2018. Now, um, we saw probably the biggest quick gains we've seen in, in recent uh, years, other than the last uh, couple of weeks in that January period of 2019. You remember how big that jump was. It basically meant that the, the year of 2019 had huge gains because it started from such a low base that happened just after Christmas. That in itself is something to think about, but the big issue that I want to point out is that that rally was led by small cap stocks. Now, small cap stocks are more cyclical, they're more sensitive to the uh, U.S. economy uh, than global large cap stocks. So if you really expect investors to have a lot of faith in the future of the economy, you want to see small cap stocks leading a rally. And that's what we saw in early 2019. And uh, that's precisely why we had such a good year in the stock market, I believe, because people thought, you know, it, it, uh, unemployment is down, everything is working out well for us. So we'll buy stocks. Now, look at what's happened in recent weeks. Um, we've seen the opposite. We've seen large caps exceed small caps. And uh, that is a, a concern because it means that people are buying large cap stocks really as a defensive measure. Some of the big technology firms, all with a global footprint, uh, the Apples, the Facebooks, the Googles, uh, the Netflixes, these companies uh, have been seeing gains, but small cap stocks, the, the, the heartbeat of the economy, where actual people produce actual things and uh, to sell to others, not doing so well. And so that is a concern. It means that this rebound is not based fundamentally on a broad-based uh, confidence in the future of the economy. Second chart I want to show you is the relationship between the S&P 500 and its 50-day moving average. Now, as you can see, we bounced off of that uh, recently, and that tells us that there is uh, you know, a reluctance to move above that figure in the market. Now, remember, these technical indicators don't, you know, rec re represent a market that thinks for itself. It just represents lots and lots and lots of individual investors, whether small or big, all looking at the same technical indicators and all making decisions based on the behavior of everybody else. So when um, the S&P bounces off uh, an important measure like its 50-day moving average, that tells us that collectively the market is nervous about pushing it above that price. But here's something that is just as important, if not more so. Uh, that shows us that the stochastic indicator, this is the slow stochastic, it measures the relationship between recent price movements and price movements over a longer period. Um, if recent price movements uh, are, uh, if they diverge substantially from previous price movements, um, then we can expect to see a turn in the market. And I want to bring your attention to that far right part of this graph. Uh, the black line is the actual daily price movement. The uh, gold line is the average of the previous nine trading sessions. And what that tells us is that uh, we are starting to fall below the average of the previous sessions. When that happens, typically we see a significant downturn. 
Uh, now, that doesn't always mean that the downturn is going to be a big one, but it does suggest that uh, the, the process is slowing down. Now, here's why I think the process is slowing down. Uh, this next chart shows the relationship between, or rather, it shows the, the proportion of stocks that are trading above their 50-day average. I remember in the previous chart, uh, we saw that the S&P 500 bounced off its 50-day average and started to decline again. Part of the reason for that, I believe, is that the uh, number of companies or stocks that are trading above their own 50-day average is fairly low. It's only about 22%. That shows that the, the other ones, the other 78% of stocks, are lagging the market. And that it means that only a handful of stocks are pushing the S&P higher. Now, um, you can certainly have a market that's going up based on only a few stocks. That's what we've seen over the last decade as the technological companies, the big ones, uh, have really led the way. But as I showed earlier, um, if the small caps are not going on, along for the ride, that means that fundamentally investors are pessimistic about the future. Now, here's a chart that shows a shorter term view of a similar argument, but uh, in relation to something called the accumulation distribution line. That essentially measures whether stocks are rising uh, along with volumes. So it's possible for stock prices to go up, um, even though volumes of trading are declining relative to uh, previous times. Now, the thing about the accumulation distribution line, which is the bottom, is that it's cumulative. So as volumes gradually decrease, even if it's imperceptible uh, you know, from that red and green bar part of the chart, the accumulation distribution line will show it. And what we're seeing, particularly in trading yesterday, was uh, a, a gradual rise in the S&P 500, but uh, a distinct downturn in the uh, accumulation distribution line from previous uh, days. Now, that tells us that although prices may be going up, they're going up on a smaller and smaller level of volume, which again means that this is, uh, you know, it's running on, on thin legs, this particular upturn. Now, another way to, to, to look at this is this next chart, which shows the fund flows. It shows that $3.6 trillion worth of uh, assets essentially have been pulled out of equities and out of equity funds like ETFs and uh, hedge funds and other uh, funds that trade in stocks, uh, whereas uh, more than $700 billion has gone into money market funds that trade in bonds and cash-like securities. Of course, that means that there's a couple trillion dollars in cash sitting on the sidelines or in other assets. But the key thing is that that is one of the biggest drops in equities, in uh, money in equities that we've seen in a long time. And what that tells us, I think, is that the, uh, the stock market boom or, or rather the uptick that we've seen is actually on, again, pretty thin legs. It's uh, fewer and fewer stocks with lower and lower volumes uh, and essentially the um, we're setting ourselves up, like, I think, for a downturn when the next big uh, increase, or rather the next big report for economic activity, like GDP, quarterly GDP figures <clears throat> for uh, the first quarter of this year, for example, then I think we are going to see some fireworks. Last thing I want to show you is the VIX, which is also known as the fear gauge. Now, uh, it, uh, it remains elevated. Its long-term average is less than 20, um, but it is hovering around 40. If we see a break above, uh, say, 40, 45, it's pretty close to that, uh, and then back towards 50, then we would uh, then think that w we have a much greater chance to see that downturn actually materialize. Now, again, the VIX is based on uh, action in the options market, um, and because of the wide swings, the volatility in the market, uh, the options market has been a bit topsy-turvy, but it's a pretty reliable indicator. So effectively, uh, we're going to be watching that too. The, the key thing about the VIX is that it's, uh, it kind of dictates the timing uh, of the change. So we're watching that very carefully. So overall, that is the short-term technical reason for my, if you like, bearishness. But remember, this bearishness is based on you know, the fact that the real economy is simply not operating. Now, a lot of people have hope in the fact that uh, some states are starting to reopen. The one I live in here in Georgia uh, the governor recently announced uh, his intention, or rather ordered, that uh, businesses be allowed to return to work. Now, the problem with that is that people in neighborhoods like mine here in Atlanta, people you know who have money to spend, are unlikely to go back to those businesses under these circumstances. 
<clears throat> cases of COVID-19 are still rising here in Georgia, uh, and people know that. that So the governor's attention to uh, reopen the economy actually violates uh, the guidelines that the Trump administration put out. In fact, President Trump this morning uh, criticized Governor Kemp here in Georgia, saying that, that he was not following the federal guidelines. Now, I point this out simply because I think that uh, the talk about reopening the economy, which has helped to boost stocks, is not the same as what actually will happen in practice. Uh, the governor can tell businesses to reopen. It doesn't mean they will. It doesn't mean employees will come to work. And it certainly doesn't mean that people are going to go spend money. So fundamentally, what needs to happen, of course, is that this uh, outbreak of virus needs to be brought under control. Uh, the real economy needs to get back on its own two feet uh, with its own internal momentum. And at that point, investors will recognize the long-term potential and they'll start buying small caps, uh, they'll start coming back in and increasing volumes, and then we will see a sustainable increase in stock prices. Right now, I just don't see it. So that's me signing off for today. Before I do, um, I just want to point out that uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the Bauman Letter, now's a good opportunity to do so. Um, we just put out a report last month uh, with a bear market survival guide, and it is up strongly, solidly above the a stock market as a whole, just as we intended it to be. Uh, and I think that's a good opportunity to get in and see what we offer in the Bauman Letter uh, if you're not already a subscriber. Secondly, I just want to mention uh, again that my YouTube videos, uh, where you're seeing this now, a lot of people have been watching them. We had 70,000 views recently. Uh, our subscribership has gone up. Uh, we have a lot of people watching. Uh, and I think that's a really good sign. I think it means that people are starting to, to listen to what we have to say. Uh, and we hope that we are right. We are confident that we are right. That's uh, why we say the things we do. But whether we're right or not, um, it, it is an opportunity to get more information and more points of view. So if you're not already subscribed, click the little bell button that says, uh, or the little button that says subscribe underneath this video. Finally, just a reminder, I do have my red stapler, folks. They did not take it away from me. You can relax on that score for the weekend. This is Ted Bauman signing off. I'll see you next week.